So we've just heard from Mike about uh, Pereira Funnel's involvement with MathWorks. Um, so you're going to uh, now you're going to show me, uh, you know, tell me what this little guy is, and show me some of the things we can do with him using the Pi and MATLAB running on PC. Yeah, exactly. So this little guy here is a little little robot, the heart of which is is a Raspberry Pi. Um, we've got some peripherals connected to him, so we've got we've got a camera, we've got a little uh, GPIO switch, so we can control him a little bit. We've got um, a motor controller board there, which is connected over a serial connection. Um, and what we want to do is we want to start writing some code for this guy in MATLAB because uh, MATLAB is a great environment to, to use to, to prototype algorithms um, but we want to be able to access the, the data from, from the Pi so we want to access the camera, we want to talk to the serial port etc um, and what we've got now in the, the MATLAB support package for, for the Raspberry Pi um, is the ability to create this network connection mm -hmm. um, from MATLAB to the Raspberry Pi and, and write your code in MATLAB right. So, so this is so this is the code running MATLAB on this PC. They're on the same network. Yep. This has got a wireless adapter, uh, and uh, I think if we uh, you're going to talk me through stepping stepping through this exactly uh, and uh, doing a little bit of image processing. Yeah, yeah. So if you just step through the the first line there, okay. that just creates a network connection now to the Raspberry Pi. So MATLAB now knows that the Raspberry Pi exists, and we can start to do things with it. So the next couple there just create a connection to the camera. Um, and then the oh, yeah, okay, the little red light has come on there. Yeah, we've got the little light on, so we know the camera's alive. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next one is just setting up the digital input. Um, and, and that's the input that's connected to the switch. That's the little switch. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the the serial port, which is connected to the the motor controller. Okay. Um, and if you just run the next little block of code there, that'll send a signal to the the motor controller. But actually, because the camera's already pointing in that direction, yeah. uh, nothing happens. Happen. So if you just go back to that section of code to it. see where tilt equals just minus twenty, yeah. if you just change that to I don't know minus forty, yeah. plus plus twenty, plus twenty, I'll yeah, it's not going to snap, snap no, anything off there. Work. So yeah, just run that. Okay. Oh, and there yeah, we go. There we are. You can see the guy's now trying to point up. I don't think he can reach plus twenty, but he's <laughs> he's doing okay. all right. Um, so yeah, now this next section of code, this is where we start doing some, right. some image processing. Okay, so let's give that a I shot. suggest you, you probably want to point the camera back down again first so that it can see the... Nothing very interesting up there. No, it's just okay. looking at a whiteboard. Okay, so let's, let's push that down. Okay, run it again. There we go. So he's pointing very, down very again there. So the, this next section now, if you just run that. So ah. that's... That's a live feed. You can okay. see my, just see my hands here. That's a live feed from the uh, from the camera. So, what we've asked what we've asked MATLAB to do there is to pull in. Was your hand too? So to pull in snapshots from the camera mm -hmm. indefinitely, really, yep. um, until the the GPIO gets pressed. Okay. So if you'd like to push the little the little switch. This guy a shot. Yeah. And you see that's now stopped. My, my hands are moving. We're not getting okay. anything new. So. That's now a snapshot right. of of what the camera can see. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do now is we want to actually, from that snapshot, we want to isolate the the green the green patch you can see because okay. that's going to be our target. So we're going to be doing something with this thing over here. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now you might think, and, and a lot of people tend to think when they do start with image processing, that the best way to get the the green part of an image, which is an RGB red green blue image, is just to look at the green channel. Okay. So let's do that. Let's just plot what the green let's channel pull, looks pull like. That, shall we? There we are. Now, actually, that hasn't really isolated the, the green at all, has it? Everything kind of looks the same there. Yeah. Um, white is pretty green, right? Yeah, white has a lot of green in it, yeah. Um, so, if you look at the, the next section of code, we've actually got a little equation there, which... Yeah. Scroll this down a little bit. Oh, there we go. There you go, it'll pop back up when it needs to. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you can see there that, that green intensity mm -hmm. that we've got there, where we're actually subtracting out the red and the blue elements. Okay, um, should we give that a go? Yeah, so if you give that a go and just go back to the figures at the bottom left. Okay. okay. There we are. So now That's you can see, isn't it? yeah, we've actually managed to isolate the the relevant part of the image that we want. There. Okay. Um, if you just go back to that figures window just quickly, okay. just so we can make sense of what this next part's going to do. Um, and if you just, I'll just grab this for you and make that stay. So it stays oh, on the screen. Nice. So it stays on the screen for us. That's all. Um, now, you see in the top up here, mm -hmm. tool strip up there. Yep. If you grab the uh, the data cursor, which is that little black cross, the one next to that oh, there. Yeah, yep. yeah. Now, if you just click click on that and then click on some of those images, just anywhere on the image, 
Um, and you'll see there, you can actually see the values. Um, mm -hmm. So the index value mm -hmm. is effectively how much green there is. Okay, in so, any part so, of the so, image. We, so we have RGB values from the original image. Yeah. Okay. And that, well, if you click oh, on no, the original image. No, okay, these are the RGB values. Then, yes, that. Image. If you click on the original image, image you'll get the RGB values okay, there. there we go. But if you click on the, the intensity image, you'll get yeah. the, the index values. Yeah. Um, and if you look at the green target, you see the values there are quite high. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do next is we want to take a threshold. So we want to say, okay, values over a certain index, we want to consider to be green. Okay. Um, so that's what the, the, the next section of code does. If you just scroll uh, if down I I mess it up, a little bit, there it is, green threshold. threshold like so you see, we, we picked a threshold of 40 okay. there, because that seems to work. That. There we go. And so now we've identified the just identified the green part of that image. Mm -hmm. um, and now we can do all sorts of stuff with that. So I mean, the next line of code just tells you how many pixels there are, because that might tell you how far away okay. the target is. Mm -hmm. um, so if you just go to the command window, oh, we should have, uh, just down there. Many thousand of these we are. Okay. You'll see, so you've got two, 2,192 pixels. Mm -hmm. So that tells you the target's reasonably close. Okay. Um, and you can do all kinds of things like that. Um, okay. So for developing an algorithm in in, in MATLAB, that, that didn't take very long. Yeah. So just um, we can just interactively communicate with the Pi. Exactly. We can control the things that are plugged into the Pi, and we get data from sensors that are plugged into the Pi, and we can just do that iteratively until we have that. Exactly, yeah. And you, and you saw that even though we did it wrong in the first yeah. instance, when we just pulled that green channel out, we mm -hmm. saw very quickly, actually, that's not what I want. I'm going to try something else, and I'm going to see. Um, so that allows you to develop this, this image processing algorithm now. And what we'll, what we'll look at um, in, in the next demo um, is using this algorithm now in a, in a complete control system to actually mm -hmm. get the robot to drive towards the, um, the target rather than just identifying. Good stuff. Great. Awesome.